SHOT SHOW DAY 3 PART 2. And guys, it's hard to keep going, man. We're running, running a little bit low on gas. Yeah, these but dogs are barking. There is so much to see. There's still places we haven't been to. Right. It's hard to believe, man. Like, so many still places. nooks, crannies, yeah. even big names that we haven't been to. But we're gonna we're gonna try to get it done for you guys. Yeah, I for you, um, America. For you exactly. I I need to eat lunch, even though I haven't. But doesn't need, matter. Need fuel. Yep. Yeah, need fuel. And I uh, got a really good podcast set up with Forgotten Weapons coming up soon. Check out CF Podcast for that one. And uh, I still have to hit Flux Defense. Dude, you got to get I'm on it, trying, man. I'm trying, dude. <sighs> anyway, so guys, yeah, we're going to head over, I think, to uh, some of the uh, farther parts of the, uh, the the convention and see what we can cover there. Yep. But again, you know, keep stay tuned for that coverage, man. Yeah, yeah man. let's do it, man. Let's do it. Hey, guys, and we're here at the Rock Island Armory booth with Dason. First of all, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks it's for coming close, by. Close name. I, yeah, like, I like yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, tell us what you got going on here, offerings for 2024. Yeah, so um, one of the big offerings that we're really excited about is this here, the uh, RIA 5.0E. Now this is the, uh, the first offering from Rock Island that's made 100% in the United States. Um, the manufacturing facility is in Cedar City, Utah, and anything that is not made in that facility is sourced within the United States. So it's been a long, you know, a lot of work, but we're really, really proud to get this to market. We're really happy with it. So the uh, the basic rundown on this is uh, it's a nine millimeter Luger, okay. um, single action, internal hammer fired. The magazine capacity with the standard max is 17 plus one. Um, we do have 10 round magazines and 26 round magazines that are that will be available shortly through Advanced Tactical. Okay. Um, just kind of your rundown. Now the cool part, the party piece with this okay. is the barrel. Now, if you look at the barrel profile, it's rectangular. Right. So, this has a patented lockup system called the RAM valve system. Okay. It's patented by Arms Force. This is the only firearm in the world that operates like this. Okay. One of the one of the really nice things that allows us to do is you watch the barrel as it recoils. It doesn't tilt. It doesn't move at all. So it recoils back a little bit. stays stays flat. The big benefit of that is on a tilt lock. Which is, you know, that's most firearms out on the market are Browning style tilt locks. As the barrel rotates on a tilt lock, when it stops moving, the muzzle of the gun wants to keep going. Mm -hmm. The gun wants to flip. Right. Well, this, because everything's moving in a straight line, all of your recoil forces are directed back into the shooter's arm. Okay. So, what that result, the result of that is we get a very flat shooting and a very stable platform. Right. And that recoil impulse seems yeah. very, very, sure very low, very manageable. Right. Another cool thing that these square barrels allowed us to do is we can get the barrel and the slide nestled really, really far down deep in this frame. Um, again, you know, the closer you can get to the shooter's hand, right. the better recoil management is right. going to be. So super low bower axis. It's also, you know, there's a there's a decent amount of mass which helps muzzle flip. Right. The that's the party piece. The uh, kind of target market for this is maybe an entry level competition style. Okay. Someone that, you know, someone that wants to get into competition shooting, right. maybe is unsure of it, but they don't want to spend, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars on a on something to get them there. Understandable. So this is the most expensive item in Rock Island's catalog, but it's for good reason. Right. It's still, you know, Rock Island was built on the idea of build, bringing affordable, good shooting guns to people's hands. Right. This is that same, the same idea, just in you know a different category. Okay. So yeah, see, it's optics ready. I mean, you got guys got it, everything tacked out, ready to go. Yeah. So, so um, we've added the optics system <coughs> for this year. Um, the cut on the slide is proprietary, okay. but the gun is shipping with two two adapter plates okay. from the factory. They're shipping with plates for an RMR and an RMSC footprint. Okay. So it covers a pretty large variety of optics. Um, there are more optics plates available, okay. but those are the two that are shipping. Um, the iron sights are SIG pattern sights. These particular ones they ship with are night vision sights. Okay. Really happy with the fiber optic front, the blacked out back, mm -hmm. just a simple setup. Okay. But if you want to co-witness with the dot, anything that fits a SIG SIG pattern, we'll bolt right onto this. That's awesome. And with this lockup, with the barrel being square and everything, 
the, the lines are like seamless. To me, I almost wish it came threaded. That, so we have a, uh, we've discussed that, okay. discussed threaded barrels. There are some complications with trying to put anything on the end of the muzzle because of the recoil system. Okay. Um, so we're, we're currently working those out. Okay. We hope to have a, you know, a threaded, a threaded model and you know a couple options for maybe compensators that fit with this specific thing in the next you know in the next year or so. Okay. Awesome. So forward thinking, I'm liking it, man. Yeah, Absolutely. So what are we looking at, like MSRP for this? So MSRP for this is 1988. Okay. Um, oh, wow. So we, you know, as far as forward thinking goes, there's a handful of other things. Um, you can see the grip and the frame or it's a two-piece assembly so right. kind of the uh, the 20 2011 type okay. firearms so the the grip is modular right now this is the only model we've got for it okay but we are working on different different you know wider slimmer yeah. different lengths different materials things okay. like that so we're not there yet but again in the next couple of years we hope to have a you know a whole line of different grip modules people can switch out absolutely we're working on oversized controls if people want to shoot comp with them, okay. things like that. Um, we're working on different calibers, we're working on different lengths. You know, this is people might want a little more compact one. Yeah, I don't think we'll go any longer, but if market demands it, you know, we'll give it a go. Full blown race gun, yeah, <laughs> full blown race gun. Well, that's awesome, man. Jason, we appreciate you having us at the booth, man. Yeah. Thanks for showing us. This coverage, this is awesome. All right, guys, we're here at the TriStar booth, and I tell you what, I, we have done quite a lot of business with you guys, the shotguns, so we're extremely happy to be here. I've got Ryan with us here, and uh, what do we have here in your hands, man? So we have a, it's called a super compact, obviously uh, designed for uh, your kids, and, and, and I'd say, you know, 10 years of age or, and, and older or so. 12-inch um, length of pull, uh, 18 and a half inch barrel, it's choked. Uh, great little turkey gun to start off uh, your youngsters with. Yeah. Um, I've also got a, a new, if we can go right over here, uh, a new side-by-side. -side. This is their working man side-by-side. -side. Um, nice case color hardened, comes in 1220 with extractors, but your everyday street price is under $700. So for a, for a nice double barrel, it's tough to beat. Yeah, it's actually one of those things where uh, I always thought that, you know, those classic side-by-side -side, uh, shotguns, first off, they seem a little bit more rare. Most people kind of go to the over-under now. Absolutely, but, but we're seeing a resurgence in these for sure. Yeah, there's certainly an interest in the aesthetic, I think. You know, people really like those kind of Western-looking guns, and so there is there is a lot more interest in it. I think it is coming back. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that sounds like a, a fantastic it's, price yeah, point. Absolutely, yeah, high-gloss wood, 1220 only, but it's a, it's just a, a great little gun for us. So. Yeah, and you know, getting uh, those kind of smaller shotguns, not just for kids, but also just smaller frame shooters, right? Like it may be uh, a, a woman shooter or just someone who's recoil averse and or something. We, you know, we do a ton of youth guns, compact guns, however you want to say it. Uh, even in your cold weather states, we got a bunch of gear on. Sure. You know, a shorter stock is, is is beneficial for that. You know, so it, we try and capture all of it. Yeah, you know, if you're uh, out there, you know, doing some hunting in, uh, say, Michigan or something in the winter, uh, certainly you're going to be bundled up, Absolutely. and it's going to be maybe a little harder to get that uh, shoulder fit right if you have a, a full length stock. Yeah. So that's a great point about that as well. Um, so these are uh, available now. Shipping now. Everything's available. Everything you see here is ready to go. Absolutely fantastic, Ryan. I mean, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Hope y'all have a great show, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Here we are at Agilite Shot Show 2024. How's it going? Lev, how's it going, man? Great. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you again. And of course, you got something new in your hand. Uh, go ahead and tell us about it. Hell yeah. Let me walk you through it. Yeah. This is our new Magnetics Battle Belt. This is kind of the culmination of about uh, a year's design where we started with a list of pain points, stuff we wanted to solve, issues with other belts in the market. We've had a list of features we want to add, and we just went to, went to work on it. So I'm gonna jump right into it. Basically, one of the main pain points we had was alignment. You start aligning your belt. Everyone starts, start in the front over here. You kind of have your hands there. You work your way around, inch your way around the belt, get to the other side, and then you find out that, oh shit, my holster used to be here, and now it's here, or used to be here, and now it's here. My belt's not aligned. Maybe you have an alignment issue like this, where you missed a bit and it's too low. Maybe you have an issue where it's too high and then it's gonna be chafing you. So what we did is, we put in this patented feature. You got two magnets right here, super strong. Two magnets in the small of the back. When you go to put it on, just clicks right on like that. Again, just clicks right on, and then you're good to go. So, 
Dude, I love that. Holy yeah. cow, that is so cool. It's so fun. We did that for hours in the office when we discovered it. It, it happens to me all the time, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Every time I put my belt on, and it ends up being the, the buckle is right here. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. God damn it, and then yeah. it's just right here. I'm like, yeah. crap, I'll do it again. So, so this, this is predictable. That, that's all yeah. it is. It's predictable. And you want your combat gear to be predictable. Yes. You don't want any surprises. So let's look at the front. Another pain point we had over here was that in the front of the plate carrier, if you're in the smallest size, like the smaller range of each size, you're fine. You have full molly all the way around. But once you start to get a little bigger than that, you expose more and more open real estate that doesn't have any molly on it. It's just going to be plain webbing. And then on the outside, you're going to have excess webbing that's blocking even more of it. So we decided to do skeletonized curve uh, molly over here. So this is all usable molly still. Let me show you when you put this in here like that, click it in. This, you still have now three or two and a half more molly segments than you had before. You can weave over the excess strap. Where the excess strap goes, you can tuck it in here. Excuse me. Tuck it in here. You could cut it after one of these sewed segments and burn it. Um, or you could roll it off if you wanted to. So that's kind of what we did about excess strap storage and extra molly real estate. Now, you can see this fits right in over here. What that does is it gives you a little more stiffness across the front of the belt. So it behaves kind of like a uh, professional shooting belt, like a competitive shooting belt, in that you have really great stiffening across the front over here, and you have a really great and stable uh, platform for drawing and re-indexing your magazines and shit. So super stable belt. It's got a 50, it's got a 25 millimeter Cobra buckle with a D ring, rated to 15 kilonewtons. The belt itself is also one inch tubular webbing, super sturdy. The webbing's rated to the same strength as this. The consumer version is not gonna be rated to keep the price lower, just gonna be strength tested. And if you need a rated one for whatever unit uh, or need, you can reach out to us and we'll make it happen. Wow. Let me show you the inner belt. Yeah, just go ahead. Wait. I'm just you wait, buddy. I gotta run that thing, dude. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright, so another pain point is that inner belts, they're a little bit flimsy. Maybe they're just like a Velcro overlap, maybe yeah. they're a little G hook, some shit like that. So we decided to make one a little more hardcore. So this inner belt has a steel buckle over here, Velcro pass-through, and it's basically set up for EDC and CCW. So it's got this feature. See, it's got a little bit of flex right there. What that does is when you sit down, it uh, stretches out, you stand up, it comes back. Basically, it lets you forget you're wearing the belt. Over here in the front, you've got another pass-through, just like on the outer belt, which means that when you're running the inner belt, this is in here, and this gives you a stiff platform. It doesn't articulate, doesn't collapse, doesn't bend in the middle. And when you're running an appendix holster and an extra magazine, so you're not worried that it's going to be collapsing and bending on you. It's going to be a nice stable platform and it's going to support you and let you draw and let you re-index super easily. Last thing is the material it's actually made out of. So instead of using a super stiff material also in the back that's going to be hard on your hips, hard on your back, we have this kind of uh, dense foam. You feel this? It's like... Uh, it's soft enough that the edges aren't gonna be rubbing into your hips. Super and and I'm gonna show you what happens when you wear it for a couple months. So if I take off the belt I've been wearing for about two months, you can see it's already started to take the shape of my back. It's got that nice V curve like, uh, like you see in leather belts. Yeah. Basically, same idea. You take off a nice old leather belt you've had for a while, it's really taken the shape of your body. This is no different. The material is compliant enough that it's gonna be really friendly on your body and it's gonna be super comfortable. So that's, that's basically the belt in a nutshell. Uh, dude. First of all, I mean, you freaking explained this so good. I might have done it like, once or twice. Like, I want to like, hey, where's the, where's the, here's yeah. my money. Like, that's yeah. not how I really feel like it. Yeah. And uh, so, is this available right now? Not available yet. I think it's going to be out in about a month and a half. Something uh, like is that. Is it available for uh, class firearms, Kaya from class firearms? Now? It's possible. It's possible. It's, we'll, we'll find out. Okay. If not after the show, then we'll send you one. Yeah, I think, okay. I think we can handle that, something like that. Perfect. Um, want to jump into the next couple products? Yes, yes please. There we go. Um, all right, let's talk about the IFAC. So the IFAC, right over here, is designed by my good friend and great designer, Gal. Gal's a super OCD guy when it comes to details, and that's exactly what you want in a piece of medical gear. It's dependable, it's predictable, and it's reliable. Um, over here in the top, you have a tourniquet pouch. This tourniquet pouch, if you're not using it, you can kind of just cinch it down, just like that. Yeah. When you cinch it down, it doesn't take up any room. It's a great place to put uh, uh, cam lights. You can put in markers, whatever you want. Over here in the front, you have two slits where you can shove in a uh, small pair of medical shears. And then to use it, you just pull one of these tabs and pull it out like that. It's going to pop right out. The advantage there over 
an elastic one, for instance, yeah. is that it doesn't matter what you have in here, it's gonna work the same way. Whereas if you have an elastic one, you don't have enough gear in here, it's like half empty, it might not be holding it tight enough. If you have too much gear, it might be way too tight and hard to get out. When you open this up over here, you can see it's organized super well. You have four individual compartments plus a sleeve over here for a decompression needle or a marker. When you take one thing out, everything else isn't gonna just fall out. So it's uh, super easy to just fold it right back up and put it away. I yeah. love this thing. That this is really good. Yeah, this is just wow. for attaching it to the stand. I got right you. Now. And then yeah. you have for you your can, belt, right? Yeah, okay. belt pass through, or you can molly it onto a battle belt. It's got uh, half molly increments, so you can get it exactly where you want it. Yeah, and I like that it is kind of a slim and smaller. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I've got one. Okay, it's and efficient. I'm at the range all the time. Mine is a little bit fat. Uh, sometimes if I sit in my car, it, it gets to be too much. Right? Yeah. I got a lot of stuff in there but uh, I don't think I, I need everything in there. Yeah. This is actually pretty cool, awesome. Yeah. I like the design that you actually pull right out Exactly. and everything Just is organized right out in the there. direction. Because mine, if you open mine up right now, I've got it organized decently, but still things will fall out. Yeah. For sure. Sure. Well, let's talk about yeah. the pincer placard. I think you're going to like this one as someone who has a lot of interesting firearms, yeah. likes to switch between firearms. So oh, okay. the pincer placard for this year is now going to be compatible with 5.56 as before with 762 by 39 and with 545, AK-74, AK-47, AKM, whatever. Also, there's this drop-in insert you can get. If you have it right in the middle like this, it just Velcros in. Now you're gonna be able to put two Glock mags in here. Um, if you move it over, yeah, if you move it over to the or MP5, if you move it over, if you have a, a bigger magazine, a wider one, you can just move it over a little bit and put one in instead. Yeah. It's nice, you can keep the same placard going and you can run it with a PCC for training. Yeah. You can take those out and go right back to your regular ones. And it was really a challenge to get this to work so well with the Kalachnikov magazines yeah. because they have these really sharp, huge tab. huge tab over there. So we widened the throat a little bit and we, we put in a protective layer of squadron on the inside that really protects it and keeps it going for a long time. And the material kind of handles, I see that you guys have been using this for a while and it's not ripping it or anything like that. No, uh, we, ha we have a testing machine set up in our office that yeah. brings it to like, uh, I think with uh, not AK mags, but Galil mags that also have a really aggressive tab on the back, yeah. up to 60,000 insertions, I think, something like that. Wow. So yeah. yeah, obviously the material on the inside was fraying a lot yeah. from that, but we didn't get through the elastic. The elastic is still protected and it still worked as a great pouch. Wow, yeah. I run exactly that, man, on my, yeah. kit, on my uh, uh, K0. You gotta pick up one of the new ones. It's okay. gonna, be, gonna be game changer. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll definitely have to do. And what else cool. you got here? Uh, Anything else you got? There's obviously. the micro map. New back panel for this year. Wait, for it attaches yep. K0? Oh, yeah. I, I need one of those. Hell yeah. 100%. Attaches to the K0, K19, attaches to any play carrier that has a molly on the back. Okay. So it's a molly based attachment, but super easy. Just a few little pieces of molly, attaches right yeah. on. You have a great hydration compartment. Uh, it can fit our new sappy size tactical hydration bladder, yeah. which is a great way to use the space on your plate yeah. carrier for hydration and not have like a long or weird shaped bladder. Um, you got two admin pouches. You have a beaver tail that expands out with a ton of storage. Yeah. You have a drop down storage flap on the beaver tail for yeah. putting in bolt cutters. Uh, it's just a super, super versatile uh, bladder pouch, back panel with good mounting options and a lot of nice little uh, individual storage. Man, Lev, you are awesome, dude. A lot of really cool stuff at Agilite. Guys, I love Agilite products. They really, I mean, not only they're awesome people, they're obviously military folks. They know what they're doing. Field tested stuff uh, by some really badass people. I personally have two play carriers from Agilite, and uh, I got some uh, stuff, accessories from you guys, and I love them. They are really high quality, well thought out uh, products. So. Definitely hey man, check him out, it. Agilite, Thanks of course, words. absolutely. And, and I've done a couple of videos and uh, people asked yeah. for my gear and I was like, hey, this is what I run, it's an Agilite. I've gotten so many messages yeah. from followers. Hey, Kai, you run Agilite, right? Which one, you know, I, I bought this Agilite. Yeah. I, I really like it too and stuff like that. So it definitely trickles down and uh, and that's my job, right? I, I use a product, I always want to tell folks who are watching, who are trusting me, the stuff that I like and I actually used to. And Agilite is definitely one of those companies. Lev, oh, yeah, man. appreciate you, man. Appreciate Thank you, you, dude. Yep. Thanks for the kind words. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for watching. Here we are at the Geisley booth. First of all, everybody knows this name. Synonymous with precision, power, and passion. First of all, Brandon, thank you for bringing us here. And nice to see you guys. Yeah, man. What do you guys have, man? So a couple of things for, for the new year. 
First thing that we really wanted to talk about, right, is ALG triggers have been known for a long time yeah. with, with basically synonymous with the AK platform. Okay. So the AKT, EL, and ULs have been around. We even had one for the Glial, the AGT, mm. and that's been around for a while. You know, good's never good enough. So what we wanted to do was we want to introduce something that we haven't seen in the market for a very long time. We wanted to get a two-stage AK trigger. And what's nice about this is essentially we were able to get an SSA system into the AK platform. So you now actually have officially a two-stage trigger for your AK. Okay. So we have an arsenal here. It's going to be a three and a half pound total pull. So I'm going to just for, for the sake of being able to see it on camera, right? So you do have a two-stage setup. You can get to that nice definitive wall and a very, very clean break. Mm. Reset is beautiful as well. Not as good as Mike with ghosting the trigger, right? But <laughs> very, very short reset okay. and you're back to the wall. Yeah. So what's nice about the system is that we found great cross compatibility across different types of AK platforms. Um, but we're looking at the end of summer. Okay. MSRP still at 350. Okay. So we're looking at a couple of different options as far as uh, we want to make sure we get enough information out there to the customer before we release because AKs obviously have a huge diversity. Right. Um, but as far as the trigger goes itself, the AK platform, right, the last couple of years, you start to see more companies come out with more and more products. Mm -hmm. But we're looking to add to that line and say, hey, you know, if you have a premium AK, guys, he wants to give you a premium trigger. Okay. So we're happy with this. Um, it's something that we're really, really excited about. Moving forward, so GFR has been something that's been out for a little while. Okay. But last year we kind of brought it out and we were like, hey, and everyone's like, hey, what's going on with GFR? What's going on with GFR? We wanted to make sure that everything was absolutely pristine. You know, we, we really wanted to make sure that the, as the GFR launched, that we gave you guys everything we promised and more. So with GFR platform, right, you have a couple of different systems. We're going to have a 14 5 pin and weld, 16 inch. We're going to have an 18 inch uh, recce, and then a 20 inch strata match, which is what I have here. Okay. Now those are all on the website. The stock isn't up quite yet, but we're, we're hoping that as Chop Show ends, we're just going to go ahead and start getting everything loaded up. What's really cool though is we've been working exclusively with Huxworks on getting a six a dedicated six millimeter can. Okay. The Flow 6K. It's on the website currently, so you can see it. Okay. That 6K is perfect because all of our GFRs, the exception of the Strata matches here, because they're designed to be a bench gun, okay. are gonna be already equipped with a Huxworks muzzle device. That's awesome. So you're already set, you're good to go. Right. So a lot of people have seen the Mod 1 edition. We added a new QDN plate and we gave basically the A17 grip. We wanted to go a little bit more vertical. A lot of people like more of a vertical grip, so right. we wanted to accommodate the market. So when we went ahead and uh, went over to the Strata match, we wanted to give you guys a couple of extra accessories okay. in comparison to the standard GFR. Okay. So I'll grab a standard as well, but for the Strato, right, we have our Mark 18, we have the Arca system already built in, so you don't have to go to utilize all these different adapter plates to get onto you if you're a tripod shooter. Gotcha. We have our super suave break up top. So what's really nice about the GFR system as a whole is we built this gun from the ground up to be a six arm. Okay. We will have 556 five, versions available. But what a lot of you're seeing is people that are trying to take a 5.56 five, and make it work with a 6R. Right. And that's where our feeding and reliability issues are coming in. So we went ahead and designed this from the ground up for 6. So with the phased array gas system, that'll be included on all the GFRs. So essentially, instead of one port, which you normally see on an AR, we have three symmetrical ports around the barrel, right? So it doesn't affect accuracy of the bullet as it travels down the barrel. Uh, but essentially, that'll decrease the overall pressure heading back towards the BCG, softening your recoil impulse greatly. With the GFR, the benefit is we also add some a little bit of secret magic into the bolt carrier group. Okay. That'll decrease the recoil impulse significantly along. Everyone's familiar with Geisley Super 42. We use yeah. braided oh, yeah. wire buffer spring. Yes. This gun, I'm not a long range shooter. I'll shoot long range, but I'm not the guy that okay. goes out there and shoots long range. <laughs> okay. We were just out on the range on Monday. They had me doped up for 942 yards and I, I can watch my trace the entire time. Wow. Having a spotter is super important, but being able to watch your own trace yeah. as an individual shooter is incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely. So we're very happy about that. All the GFRs will come standard with a steel riveted cam race. So Geisley has a unidirectional cam pin, right? It's okay. beefed up on one side. So what's really nice is we want to increase the longevity of the upper. So having a steel on steel versus steel on aluminum okay. will definitely increase the longevity of the gun as a whole. All of the guys is also, you know, we're known for our triggers. It's SSA EX yes. all the way. Yes. So you're, you know, you're no shortage of triggers. So we also went ahead and uh, adopted what we've seen on a lot of the uh, Super Duties. 
we, all of them will come standard with a steel uh, insert. Okay. You'll have mounting solutions all over the board. So however you want to run your sling, you're good to go. And just to touch on the barrel real quick, guys, yeah. we're going to do it. So for here, for the Stratos, right, we're going to do a cut rifle barrel system. We're going to do the 18, the 20, and the 22 inch. Okay. For the recce system that I have right here, it is a cold hammer forge, chrome line barrel done in house. Guys, okay. it has two beautiful cold hammer forges back in our facility. We do everything in house. We take very good quality and care of our barrels. And then the 18 inch reccees, the 14 fives, and the 16s will have that system installed. Okay. We also want to show off just the guys we stock on the back. We just have a recessed trigger, so it's not easy to bump. It's got a little bit longer length of pull. It's perfect for this system. And we have four different mounting points across the side. So if okay. you want to mount your sling outboard, You've got plenty of solutions, including the actual, uh, the rear end plate also has one as well. Okay. We tapered down the uh, the actual castle nut. It helps a little bit with that sling mounting system as well. So if you want to run your sling any way you want, you're good to go. All right, guys, this is going to be the commercial version. This is this is Project Joy. Okay. Right? So it's very similar to the Mark One Mod Zero okay. the, for the MRGG project. So what we want to do is come from the tip all the way down. We just still have muzzle device compatibility with all the Huxworks 762 TIs mm -hmm. or 762s. Same cold hammer forged chrome line barrel, immaculate accuracy for something that's a cold hammer forged chrome line system. Okay. We take care of all of our stuff in house. Right. We have two beautiful cold hammer forges at Geisley, and we want to make sure that we give you guys the accuracy that you expect out of a system like this okay. by still giving you the longevity of a cold hammer forged barrel. Right. So, moving down the system, we extended the receiver to go ahead and give you more rigidity, and that way, when you mount things further out, you don't have to worry about as much bipod or load flex, things of that nature. Now, what's different with the beefed up system, right, is now we have the ability to give you a full ambidextrous lower. Okay. So, we have a billet lower system, still have that steel cam race on the inside, right? Now you have a magazine release towards the bottom. We went ahead and kept the maritime bolt catch look. And then on the other side, what's really cool is that you actually can utilize the dust cover to lock the bolt to the rear. We have a steel disc on the insert on the bottom here. Okay. So instead of having to fish for a button, right, which is, you know, once you pack controls into one area, it becomes exceedingly hard to memorize, especially muscle memory, to get to the right button. You can just press on the dust cover itself. Oh, that's neat. It's a lot that's neat. That's right? neat. So you have a nice large bolt release, but to lock the bolt to the rear, you don't have to go fishing for a small button near it. You can just hit the dust cover. That's, that's, so that's neat. That's very, very useful. And then obviously we went ahead and sheet the magazine release a little bit just so that it's not in the way, it doesn't get accidentally bumped. We move the forward assist up slightly just so that if you're running a larger optic, you can get to the charging handle. But as far as the whole platform goes, we're very happy with the Joy series. Uh, these, like uh, Matt was saying, this is gonna be available, available in a variety of different barrel lengths. We're looking towards the end of summer, it's okay. gonna be the launch date. Okay, and price is TBD. Right or, uh, yes, TBD at this point, just for the commercial stuff. Okay. We have a price online right now okay. for the, uh, basically, what's uh, the MRGG. Right. But uh, we, I'm gonna make sure that we get guys a little bit more information on pricing for the various lengths. Because gotcha. we do have a couple of different versions. Okay. All right. But all that information will be coming soon. We tell people, sign up for the, uh, basically, our, our, our newsletter. Right. We said we don't blow up anyone's email. Mm. We just wanna make sure we get that information to you guys so it's accurate. Awesome. Well, Brandon, you've gone over so many awesome things. That is awesome. This is probably the neatest thing I've ever seen, um, especially with Ambi, because I've just seen Ambi, your finger lifts off and it's gone crazy, but that was one of the smartest, cleanest ways to do it. We're very proud of the product. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having Absolutely, us. Absolutely, guys. Absolutely. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. All right, guys, we're here at SAR USA. I've got Eric with me. How's it going, sir? Hey, how are you? Hope you all are having a great show. Uh, obviously, the interest in Turkish handguns has just really exploded in the market, and we wanted to cover some of the new things you've got and uh, see what you've got to highlight for the show. Absolutely. So we are SAR Firearms. We're out of Miami. We've been around since 2018. Uh, we import from SAR's Miles Firearms. So they've been making guns since 1880. So we have some brand new models of guns that have a lot of technology and a lot of pedigree behind them. So the model I have right in front of me is the SAR-9 Subcompact. I'm actually gonna start with this guy here. So the SAR-9 Subcompact is brand new. We haven't had anything like this size whatsoever before. Um, it's gonna come with this aluminum flat face trigger. It'll come with tritium night sights, uh, RMSC cut, so you can actually co-witness with those. Uh, 
It will come with two magazines. One of them, you're going to have your choice of either having the picky extension or a flat fit, uh, um, a flush fit uh, magazine plate on there. But we're really excited that it also takes our full size SAR 9 magazines. So your secondary magazine will come with a 15 round uh, capacity with a sleeve on there. All of our guns come with a hard case, um, at least one extra magazine, and an all brass cleaning kit. You're talking about $479.99 for something like that. So MSRP. Yeah, so that's, so, that's a great new uh, product line for y'all to get into the subcompact kind of dedicated carrier world. Um, and then we've got some bigger cousins of this. Absolutely. All right, guys, so we're taking a look at the next size up, right? Yeah, absolutely. So this will be the SAR 9 Compact. So this is a completely different handgun. Um, what's a big difference between this one is it does have individual and removable grip panels. Mm -hmm. um, so on the gun comes uh, medium, medium, medium. You'll have smalls and larges, and it's three individual panels. So for example, like the one that I carry, I use the large to fill my palm print, the medium to get my thumb around, and then the small to get my fingers around on that. So they scanned a, a couple thousand of the employees' hands. That's how they came up with the grip profile. So that's why it really fits in everybody's hand very well. 15 round capacity, four inch barrel, uh, still optic cut, tritium nitrides. Comes in the three different colors, uh, black, bronze, platinum, and OD green. So I think it's really fantastic that you've got not just removable grips or like uh, interchangeable grips, but it's actually multiple pieces. So you can really customize the contour. Like I think that's something that is, is different from most places where it's just like a back strap and then you just get to pick one back strap. Like that's really a cool idea. And the more comfortable you are with that, the more it naturally points, it's more time you're gonna spend on targets. So and you're just gonna have a better time shooting, go out and practice a little bit more, get a little bit better with it. So yeah, that makes total sense. And I love the uh, the porting or, or lightning gear in the slide. Yep. So I like it too. It's also very easy to uh, manipulate the slide from the front or the back because I mean those are really deep cuts that you can really get a good handle on. Yeah. So that's a fantastic uh, option here for the compact size. Again, you know, again super popular for kind of carry, uh, but it's also big enough that you you know don't have to think about it as a concealed carry. It could just be like a normal range gun. Uh, but we got something even bigger next, right? Absolutely. All right. Let's take a look at that. All right. So we've got the Sar9 Gen 3, and what's uh, what's the new improvement on these pistols? Yep, so this will be the full size pistol. Again, uh, the uh, molded grip to uh, match your hand here, the high relief to get your first non-trigger finger up on there. Lunum flat base trigger. This is our full size pistol though. It'll come with the 4.4 inch barrel and a standard 17 round capacity. This one will also have an MDEC to safety as well. I mean, that's important for uh, us wrong-handed shooters out there, uh, certainly. Now, it's one of those things where sometimes you almost have to alter the way you manipulate the firearm because the controls can be a little wonky for us left-handers. But uh, And then you said this is basically the same pistol, but this one has a slightly longer barrel. Absolutely. So that's a 4.4 inch barrel. This is the Sport model. The Sport model comes with a 5.2 inch barrel. Now, I always loved shooting the larger handguns. I've, I've, I just think it's more fun. Uh, you get a little bit better control when you got something bigger to grip onto. So this looks like it'd be a lot of fun to take out and just really run it through the range. Uh, again, I know that with the size, it's less likely it's going to be a carry gun unless it's like a duty gun. But, uh, I mean, certainly I think that this looks like it'd be a lot of fun just to run it around the range. And for it to be range ready, also it comes with a 17-round magazine and an extended 19-round magazine as well. So That's great. And keep you shooting, more time shooting, more time. That's right. And you still got those nice features with the uh, the optics cut and everything. I mean, so this looks like it's ready to go and have a lot of fun. Yep. And then we have a, a special SOCOM type of uh, variation of the pistols over here, right? Incredibly popular. Right? All right, let's uh, move around the table and we'll see you there. All right, so you're telling me this is basically like the new hotness. This is what everybody's really interested in right now. Absolutely. These ones are absolutely vaporizing off shelves right now. Some of the cool following that we've earned from some of our very popular pistols, reliable. People saw this come out and they just, they were very happy about it. So it'll come with a threaded barrel. It'll come with the deep cut relief so you can co-witness on the R, uh, RMSC, uh, you know, red dot on there. It'll also come with a flared magwell, which will actually push like your pinky finger up a little bit higher, mitigate recoil even a little bit more than that. Uh, 17 round magazine and a 21 round mag magazine so that's going to come in a hard case with two magazines 
with those awesome sites on there, uh, an all brass cleaning kit, and MSRPs at $519.99. So I can't mean, beat that. Phenomenal deal, a phenomenal value, and I think that's something that customers are just always looking at, especially right now. Everything's more and more expensive, so getting that value is really important to our customers out there. But uh, obviously, it does not include this uh, this flashlight. It that's that's going to be a little aftermarket thing. But you can pimp this thing out however you'd like. If you want to get your race gun on, or uh, you know, really duty kind of build, uh, this thing looks like it would definitely get the job done. Yep, hope so. <laughs> and we got one more thing. It's going to be a little bit different uh, instead of all these semi-autos. So why don't we take a look at what's like kind of the brand newest thing? We have revolvers. All right, so we've carried quite a lot of SAR handguns, but this is something we've never had. What is this? So we are really excited to release our revolvers. So again, these revolvers have been made for a long time, but we have them in the United States now. So we call it the SR38. More popular people are just calling it the revolver that we make. Uh, 357 Magnum or the 38 Special. We have two different models, or two different barrel lengths, I'm sorry. We have a six inch and a four inch, and we have it in stainless and in black. Six round capacity. I'll tell you, the big rubber grips um, get a really nice purchase on there. It actually shoots really, really well and comfortable, even shooting 357 Magnums. So yeah, I mean, obviously 38, 357, that's probably got to be one of the most popular combination cartridges out there for revolvers. And it's really interesting to hear that, you know, we've got this kind of thing that's been in production, but it's just getting to us. So obviously when you're dealing with imported firearms, that happens a lot. We've got companies that manufacture things overseas and they're just not available in the U.S. market. So it's great that y'all were able to get these things here and they're now available to people. Thank you. Well, Eric, I appreciate your time, man. I hope you uh, are having a great show. Uh, certainly, we appreciate you going through all of these options. That was a lot to go through. But uh, guys, you know, again, we've done quite a lot of stuff with SAR handguns, and we're excited to see the future of them and get these out, uh, see them out in the wild. We're over here now, excitedly, at Stealth Arms, where they, uh, last year at NRA Annual Meet was when we first met, uh, with about the platypus, which just really excited me. Something's really cool. Tim, it's good to see you. I hope your arm's okay. Yeah, we're, we're doing all right. <laughs> All right, All right. Man. Well, what really excited me about Stealth Arms and the Platypus, first of all, is the website. Every little thing, dude, like you could just, oh, the, so much detail, so much customization. It's crazy, man. I mean, what what inspired y'all to just do this, really? So, just, you know, all the big companies, they put out products, and and it's, here it is, buy it, yeah. you know? And, and who are we to know what our customers want? And so, by giving our customers complete control, we now know what they want, exactly what they want, right. you know? So that's, that we just wanted to go all in 100% right. complete customization. Right, and so honestly, if, if you wanted to build out the Platypus, uh, which is which is ultimately simplifying a 2011 that takes Glock mags, yep. um, just like that, I think that's Northern Lights look with the, yep. with the white uh, inlay, black rib, something like that. You can literally build that exact same gun out, and before you know it, <sighs> You have it in your hands. And how freaking cool is that? Cool. Right? Cool. So go ahead and tell us about the pistol, man. Just what went into it. Yeah. So some of our, this pistol has some of our new features, Glock mag, um, our new grip texturing. That was our customers asking, you know, hey, we want something a little more, a little more grippy. Um, law enforcement and also uh, competition guys. They just want a little more grip. We've got bull barrels, that's new. We've got a few new calibers, 357 SIG, and we're catching flack for the, you know, why the 357 SIG? Well, because we could, and a few guys still want it. Right. 40 and then a 45, the ACP. And so the 45 will be the Platypus 21. Right. And, and, and the numbers all make sense. Yeah. Um, custom serial numbers, that's a big one. That's, yeah. that's an exciting one for us. Yeah. It's gonna be right on the website. You're gonna be able to type in whatever serial number you want, and if it's available, yeah. You got it. So we're re we're really excited to continue the uh, the platform and the evolution of it. Man, well, I've already got the wheels turning about what I want my show number to be because uh, I've got a couple ideas. You guys will probably see it soon. But how cool is that? Again, ground up customization on your website, and you can literally customize everything down to just one little detail. You showed me you, you could add a little bit of the hammer strut. Yeah, yeah right? on the hammer strut. Yeah. You mind just showing that yeah, really quick? Sure. Yeah. Do you want to? We'll go with uh, a pink hammer strut. Go to pink, pick your color. We'll do sick pink. And now you've got a sick pink hammer strut right there. Dude, 
first of all, the website's so simple too. Yeah, like user, every little thing. User friendly. That's and yep. It's really exciting. Now that obviously is a really cool part, but the gun itself, guys, I haven't shot it yet, right? But just handling it here at the show, again, feeling the lockup, feeling the tolerances, and also how smooth the slide and the action is. The trigger is phenomenal. Yep. Guys, it's an impressive pistol that again I'm excited to start running. And also having something just a plain Jane Black yep. on our website, I think would be pretty cool. And also the price point you guys come in, uh, obviously right. the, the customization, you know, but if I just wanted this pistol, MSRP, where yeah, am I at? So this, this is about a $1,500, $1,600 pistol. They start at 14, but then as you add options, depending on what your budget is or what you want, they just go up from there. And then we don't gouge you on anything. It's all just, what does it cost us? All right, let's do that. And it's all affordable. Man, it's so neat. Even on the website, you can add an optic. Uh, you can with the with yeah. with the whatever raised sights you want. You can have no sights. You can have standard sights, high you know, high sights. Again, so that you just added it there with the SRO. Yeah. You want to see the Delta Point Pro? Click on the Delta Point Pro, Acro, Hollison, and we'll have more sights coming yeah. as we go. Uh, no cut, and then you can toggle. If you want to see what our cap looks like, you know that's what that's what you're gonna get uh, when you get the optic cut right there. So it's really slick. Man, and what is? I'm just curious. What is the turnaround from from the moment somebody builds one out here, adds yeah. the cart, check out? What's so the turnaround are you looking at? The the black guns do get through a little little quicker, Natural. but um, the custom colors they're around 12 to 14 weeks right now. We're yeah. probably gonna get a little little boost after shot. We'll probably be back to 14 to 16 weeks, okay. which it's not where we want to be, but yeah. it's a lot of customers say, hey, that's still that's still fine. You know, but we're we're always striving. I would want it in like four weeks or three weeks. So we're we're constantly trying to move the needle in that direction. Right, which which is fine and well, but at the end of the day, I don't think time is any substitute for quality work. You know what I mean? Right. Even if it took right. you a little bit longer, I, I still want to make sure I'm getting a quality yeah. quality pistol. So, you know, at the end of the day, if it takes you a little bit longer, but I'm gonna get a smooth running, reliable gun, yeah. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's that's across the board. We get emails like, hey, I'm just checking. Don't rush it, but I'm just checking where am I at, you know, right. but don't rush it. So right. we, that's our customers understand that and they appreciate the quality that goes into each build. Right. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, Tim, thank you yeah, so much for Clint. yeah appreciate taking the time. It. And uh, I think an SRO on this one with the uh, standard sights, I think will probably yeah. be just fine. I think you might be seeing this at the range very, very soon. Hey, guys, we're here at the Pelican booth. And first of all, y'all know I love organization skills. You've seen my battle box set up just this way and i'm sitting here with james first of all thanks for having us man nice to meet you thank Absolutely. you yeah so of course everybody wants to know what's new what do you guys want to showcase and take it away it's new with pelican this year so as always you know 46 years in business making the world's leading protective cases but what we're really focused on is expanding in that ecosystem right, right? you know with the lid accessory the easy click molly panels continuing to bring that into our other case models mm -hmm. Uh, but for us, a couple of major developments, pelicanfoam.com, this is a big one. Yeah. So we're spinning up our ability to offer custom foam to the consumer. You can go on pelicanfoam.com from your computer, design your own foam. You know, we have predefined objects, so if you want to drag in your Glock, just drag it in, plop it in, it's cut. Uh, we can do custom texts, you know, logos, etc., laser engraved. And the foam, base foam itself is actually water jet cut in our Ontario, California facility. Okay. So we're doing this here. Uh, so a lot of that, and again, this is available across all of our cases, okay. whether it's small pistol cases, long gun cases. So air, it doesn't matter. Air, protector, storm, bullet, okay. you name it. Uh, and we ship it right to your doorstep. Okay. Uh, and the nice thing is you can actually buy it with the case if you want to just bundle it. You want a new, you're getting a new setup, okay. foam and case, or you can just get the foam to replace an existing case you got, okay. which is powerful. So the other major thing for us oh. is, uh, excuse me, Cargo. So cargo is our uh, Pelican cargo case is our vehicle mounted solution. Okay. So we have uh, six different sizes of cases that can be mounted in three different ways. Uh, you can mount on a rooftop with if you have like an aftermarket roof rack using T-slot rail. Uh, you can mount in your bed side using uh, saddle mounts that basically just hold it. Or what we're looking at here is actually the uh, cross bed mount. So. This works by latching onto the side of your, your bed if this were up against your cab here. The idea with it, which is nice, is you got the storage when you need it. It's all you know weatherproof. 
Made in USA, we mold this in our Massachusetts roto plant. Uh, but when you need that space back, you just pull these two pins on the side, the mounts fold away, case comes out. So you've got your bed back for putting dirt bikes in or putting gear in. So it's a really powerful solution to kind of help bring some of that storage out of your truck if you need that available. Uh, and again, you know, it's Pelican, so it's lifetime warranty. Absolutely. It's made in USA. This is, we're proud of this. So bringing this into the market to really help expand on what we've been doing here. Uh, from a sneak peek perspective, a couple of things we got coming out. Uh, you know, a lot of us, we've all got our long gun cases. We've had them in our closet and we travel, put them in the bed of the truck. We're coming out with a legacy case mount solution so you can actually roof mount it and okay. lock it down by holding the handles. Okay. So you don't have to, you know, jerry rig it up. You can just mount it, pop those things on. So we're going to be launching those next month. That's awesome. Uh, very excited. Awesome, man. Well, with all of this, I'm pretty sure you've made like an Overlander's wet dream over here. Yeah, so, no like, kidding. That's great. Especially for you taco boys. We love you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man. James, appreciate you thank so you. much. Appreciate Thanks for bringing us here. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, we're here at Surefire, and I've got Andrew with me. Andrew, how's it going, man? It's going well. Thanks for having me. So uh, Surefire, of course, is one of those just name-recognized brands, and everything that we have over at CF Contest, uh, by the way, if you haven't gone over there, check out cfcontest.com. But just about everything we feature over there is not considered finished until there's a Surefire flashlight somewhere on there. And uh, I understand you got some th things you want to highlight for us today. Yeah, definitely. I think most of the CF you know, audience is probably familiar with by now the RC. Mm -hmm. um, we're still, you know, absolutely promoting it. It's been well received, and we're having a hard time keeping up with them. Uh, RC3, if you're not familiar, though, is a, it's a well, this version is a 5.56 suppressor. Mm -hmm. uh, it has all the attributes of our previous SOCOM RC and RC2, meaning it's extremely durable, um, really good flash performance. Mounts on our SOCOM mounts with minimal impact shift, repeatable impact shift. All that good stuff, but we've reduced the back pressure by 60%. Oh, wow. So that means less gas in your face. That means the gun's going to be more controllable and it's going to stay cleaner. Less crying. All, a lot less crying. Okay, okay. Also on this gun, um, we are, have our new switches. That's the CSP. Mm -hmm. We also have a CSM. Um, P is Picatinny. You can see it, it's grabbing on the Picatinny rail. Yeah. M is an M-lock version of the same compact switch. Um, it's a dome switch that's really easy to momentarily activate consistently because okay. there's a lot of travel in that spring, uh, but you can still click it for constant on. Okay, so it's not like a dual switch where you have the two buttons for momentary or constant. One, but you can get that really repeatable action. Yeah, as you know, guns get shorter, more and more accessories, the rail space is getting crowded. Yeah. Uh, so this is a much more compact option compared to the SR switch you're talking about. Um, so really excited for that. Obviously our Scout Light um, Pro, this is the Turbo Series. Uh, um, awesome long gun weapon light. Uh, down here, this is brand new. I actually have one in my pocket I can show you. Hey. Stiletto Pro 2. If you're not familiar with the Stiletto line, uh, the whole concept is it's a, a slim everyday carry flashlight mm -hmm. based on a flat lithium rechargeable battery. Um, we made the Stiletto, the first Stiletto was a polymer body, aluminum head, 650 lumens. Then the Stiletto Pro, fully aluminum, was 1,000 lumens. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the Stiletto Pro 2. Obviously, you can see it's got two reflectors, two LEDs. It's putting out 1,500 lumens, and more importantly, 35,000 candela. Yeah. Um, so really, really nice focus beam that's gonna get you a lot of distance, especially considering how compact it is as an EDC light. Yeah, now, I uh, wanna jump in. We did do a video uh, one time comparing lumen versus candela, and, and lux, actually. And and so just a brief kind of analogy. So Lumen is like the total light created and Candela is like the directness or compactness of the light. So you get that longer beam thrown. Yeah, exactly. Lumens will tell you in general how bright a light is. Candela will tell you how far it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also, um, all the previous stilettos were US, micro USB rechargeable. This is now upgraded to USB-C. The, okay. the Stiletto Pro will also go to uh, USB-C. Um, dual direction pocket clip it means you can carry it bezel up or bezel down. I like it bezel down. Um, so awesome new. EDC lineup or add addition to our stiletto line. Awesome, yeah. And then lastly, what I talk about over here, um, this is the XR1. Uh, we also have an XR2. XR1 is a light, you know, compact weapon light. Mm -hmm. XR2 is light laser. Um, basically, this is meant to be a mid-size kind of concealable weapon light. Obviously, you can use it for whatever you want, um, but it stays within the parameters of like a Glock 19 width-wise and length-wise. 800 lumens, 15,000 candela, um, so really good performance. It has a uh, ambidextrous switching on both sides that you can momentarily activate or you can tap it for constant on, um, and it has a removable uh, rechargeable 
battery cartridge, um, also, also with a fuel gauge on it, uh, so you can check how much battery is left. So really cool, compact, high output weapon light uh, for those that want to conceal something with a little more capability. Yeah, and I think it's really important when you look at uh, you know self defense usage, whether it be concealed carry or like you know in the household or something, to have a light because so many of these self defense situations happen in the dark. You need to be identifying what it is that's there. So you know the fact that that's going to fit the most common carried handgun probably in the, the U.S. the Glock 19 is fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. A lot of violent confrontation happens in, in, in the dark hours, and mm -hmm. so it's a, a good idea to have a weapon light and be prepared for that. All right, Andrew. I mean, I think that these are some pretty super exciting uh, offerings that uh, Surefire is coming out with. Again, just like a, a, a brand name that just kind of like holds the value uh, and is recognized just industry wide. So I definitely appreciate you taking the time to go through these uh, offerings with me. Um, I hope that you have the great rest of your show, man. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Hanging out now over here with a local company and one of my favorites, PTR, and also Garantham. It's always good to see you, bro. Good to see you, man. Yeah, dude. <laughs> all right, well, first of all, you and I just had a great conversation about the suppressors and what's going on in the world right now with the flow-through technology and everything. Let's talk about that one more time and what PTR's got coming. Yeah, sure. Um, so te suppressor technology is at a really exciting point right now. Um, for so long, the race with suppressors was sound, flash signature, what you call signature reduction. Right. Um, and that got really good. The Surefire RC2, your typical military suppressors are great at it, Otter Creek. But what was quickly realized um, the last few years is that many of the of our military's operators um, are getting cancer from the amount of back pressure. Unfortunately, firearms, when they fire, have a lot of lead and heavy particulate matter that causes right. cancer. So it's like, okay, for the future generations, what do we need to do? So we had reduced back pressure cans that right. began to come out. First started with BNT, uh, then we have companies like Huxworks and others that have come out of the woodwork. But this got really big uh, about a year or two ago right. when 3D printing of metals, specifically in Canal, yep. which is the metal that suppressors are made out of, became very mainstream. So suddenly it wasn't like, I have to machine baffles in a really weird way. Suddenly you can print this material in whatever way will make the gas flow the best. So companies like crazy right now are in an arms race throwing down patents, trying to find the best way yeah. to model this gas flow. So you have companies like PTR with their porous metal right. um, to help like redirect flow. You have Huxworks, you have SpectreCat, um, they're Boeing engineers who yeah. understand gas flow pretty well. You have SIG, every company, well, Surefire, which right. they're RC3, yeah. every company <laughs> is coming out with a, with the, the term is patented, but a flow yeah. through design, a reduced right. back pressure design, right. but nobody's in the lead yet yeah. because everybody is still trying to figure out what is the best, most effective design. Right. So it's a very exciting time right now. That's yeah. why I'm really excited for the PTR suppressors, why I'm really excited for the um, new SpectreCat suppressors, yeah. for, for everything. So the it's a really good time to get into a, the suppressor market because right. a lot of these suppressors are running so well right now like the huxworks k's are amazing we've been running the shit out of those yes. um these i haven't shot them yet but i'm sure they'll be incredible i just saw a carbon fiber suppressor stuff's going crazy right yeah. now um and technology has been stagnant for so long, so I'm very excited. Right, if you haven't checked out Disavowed Group, take a look at them too, okay. because oh, well. these, these guys came up with some sort of suppressor that actually, it's all really sciencey shit, right? So they they figured out sound waves and that type of technology where they actually reduced the signature of the supersonic crack out to 150 yards. Very cool. Yeah, very so cool. you know, it's little shit like that. You're like, dude, you're right, man. This arms race for suppressor technology is super cool. And if you guys think too that silencer ownership, stuff like that is like scary or difficult, it, it really isn't. It is cumbersome and bullshit that the NFA exists. Sure, yeah, of course. But at the same time, go out there, own a silencer. You won't be mad about it. No, and, no. and again, if we can repeal silencer laws, which are completely outdated, uh, make no sense. Yeah. Uh, the NFA Act as it came into play and as we currently have it is hilarious. The $200 tax stamp is uh, from the cost of the Thompson submachine gun in the 20s. Right. It was meant to double the price, but we still have it in place. That's how archaic it is. So right. when we talk about overhauling laws, i.e. getting rid of them, um, nothing's gonna help more than the help of a younger generation. So right. get out there. Right, and also organizations like Gunners of Fucking America. Exactly. I mean, yeah. GOA is doing a lot of good work out there, so make sure you guys are supporting them. And also, supporting Grantham. So go Appreciate like his latest guys. video. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> Lots dude, of fun dude, stuff. it's always Thank good you, to man. see you, bro. Welcome back, guys, with our SHOT Show coverage. And I'm standing here with Dave Mottak, 
Yeah, how you Absolutely doing? good, man. We're sitting here at the wonderful Sons of Liberty uh, Gunworks booth, and you got some pretty neat stuff here, man. I'm noticing something that might stop me from potentially burning my leg, maybe? I don't, I don't know. What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so thanks for showing up. Um, we are at the Sons of Liberty Gun booth. Um, here on this gun, we've got our newest offering for an MRAC suppressor shield. Okay. So it's a modular rail attached coupler suppressor shield. So what we have is a quick disconnect, free floating carbon fiber suppressor shield. Um, so it's a rigid high temp resin. Okay. Um, and the way that this mounts is through the M-lock slots um, on the three and six and, uh, or three and nine o'clock position of the rail. Okay. Um, and that mounts our female coupler. Okay. And then we've got a quick disconnect and reconnect coupler right there. Wow. This is really dope. I mean, this, to be honest with you, it solves so many issues, first of all, heat mirage. Yes. Burning of the pants, like I just mentioned. I mean, yep. I literally have burns on my left kneecap so many times, and like the most tender spot too, the, like the part that bends, so that's even worse. But this is this is phenomenal, man. So how many like how many renditions of this do you have? Like do we have longer ones, shorter K models, like what are you talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So um, to your point, this is a this offers a huge reduction in mirage. Right. So if you're on any kind of precision gun, yeah, um, long range gun, we also have our precision rifle suppressor shield, the okay. PRSS, um, that you can clamp onto the barrel for bolt guns. Okay. Um, but on something like this, a huge concern is that transition and that risk of burning yourself down on your kneecaps, right. just like you mentioned. So um, huge protection there. What we see is a 60% reduction in right. surface temperature from the surface of the suppressor right. to the outside of our shield wow. okay. and so even at a thousand degree suppressor this is still safe to touch your fabric and you're not going to burn a hole through your cry pants right I, well, exactly that because nobody nobody wants to pay for those again <laughs> right. cry once buy once right all right so another thing though i see a lot of application for this for like even departments going in and out of vehicles we're talking maybe like Border Patrol coming out and stuff, stuff like that in very, very hot climates. So they actually had to engage something or something's going on. And this, first of all, could save the fabric inside the car, save the fabric on you, just save a body part, leg. That's that's extra primo to me. So, yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. Huge, huge protection, not only for yourself and your clothing, yeah. um, but anything around you. Absolutely. Um, you know, dog handlers, you get new engagement yeah. and you, you sling your weapon and you've got a dog right there next yeah. to your leg. Um, so, yeah, huge protection value there. Definitely. Um, to your point earlier um, about the lengths and sizes, we do offer these in multiple different lengths. Okay. So uh, this is the, our six inch model. This is one of our best selling models because it fits on most of the, the K cans, like right. the Sandman K, the Flow 556. Um, but we offer these in five inch through okay. nine and a half inch wow. lengths. So people just go to the site, pick, match up, take the overall length of their can and just match up what they got. And so no, yep. no, how many different colors, or is this the only one? Or this is the only cover uh, color we offer right now. This okay. is what we call natural, okay. so it's clear Cerakote. Okay. So we can see the sexy carbon fiber underneath there. Okay. Um, and it matches up with most of the black guns. Okay. So. Awesome, um, man. Now this is our M rack okay. um, that mounts up to the M lock slots. Okay. This model right here is our U rack. So this is the universal rail attached coupler. Okay. So this clips onto the front or uh, the top Picatinny rail. Okay. And so. So if you're not running one of the rails that we've specifically designed the MRAC for, you got um, covered. like the L89, right. um, so this is the M89, we don't offer an MRAC for this yet, um, but the rail height over bore is a standard in the industry. Okay. So you can put this on basically any free floating AR-15 handguard that's on the market. That's awesome. So you've tackled pretty much everything. If we don't get you with M-Lock, we've got you with everything else. So, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And it's the same um, quick disconnect coupler. This shield doesn't have it, or this mount doesn't have it on there, but we've also machined um, the top of this to accept the Unity Tactical Fusion flip-up sights. Oh, the hub. Yes. So you can put a uh, oh. Fusion flip-up sight right under this flag plate right here. Um, so you're not wasting rail space if you're still wanting to run backup sites. That is awesome. So another feature of these, the MRACs, um, just like the availability to put a sight on the U-Rack, is these screws right here are spaced at the standard 20 millimeter M-Lock spacing. Okay. So you can take this uh, rail off if you want, okay. and you can replace it with a light mount, a sling mount, an Arisaka mount, a Surefire, a Cloud Defense, anything that has a standard 20 millimeter hole spacing, right. you can actually just screw it right into our mounting hardware inside. So bec because you've got your mount on here, we're not losing any bit of rail space. No, not none Everything whatsoever. is being still reutilized, and that's something that's 
extra primo as well. So let's bear that in mind because normally when people start throwing out next thing, you're gonna have to start scooting everything back. Right. But, but you guys have maximized everything out of that. Wow, this is awesome, man. I'm seeing all this, this is great. Maybe we can partner this up with, I don't know, something, I don't wanna say giveaway, but something that we just hand to somebody who just comes with. Yeah, I, I think that these go really well on maybe a, like a flow 556K. Auburn, ball's in your court, boss. <laughs> Love you, man. Absolutely. Well, Dave, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank and you. Awesome. Have a great show, guys. This is awesome. All right, guys. End of Shot Show, day three, part two. Woo. And I tell you what, this show is so yeah, big. Yeah. It's like the yeah. biggest yeah. Shot Show yet. The, we're actually going to give you all part three, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, man, I think it's uh, it's time we got to go get a, a little refresher. Yeah, you know, get some, food, please. Get some food, yeah. refuel. I need some coffee. And then we'll be back at it to yeah. cover more of the show because, guys, this is just such an enormous show. We, there's a, so hard to bring everything to you, but we're going to do the best we can. The fact that we're gonna do part three, what does that say? That means we are up in our games at a classic firearms, man. Sacrificing our yeah. bodies for you, America. That's right. All right, so <laughs> uh, go out there, make sure you're subscribed. You got notifications for the podcast channel because we've got so many interesting podcasts coming out. Those are gonna be spaced out a little bit. So if you got the notifications, you'll get notified when we're posting those. But yeah, guys, uh, again, stay tuned for part three. Yeah.